Hey everybody, Dominic Marconi here, Executive Director of the Oregon Chapter of the Pacific Northwest Section. Today in our March Spotlight, I have the privilege of introducing Ed Fisher from Southern Oregon Golf Academy. Ed, thanks for joining us today. Happy to do it. Thank you. So, Ed, why don't you start off by telling everybody how long you've been a PGA member? Um, I believe I was elected uh, in 1989, so that uh, makes it 30, 33 years, something like that. 33 years. And a pretty good career at it, too, huh? Uh, I've been very fortunate. Yeah, that's great. So, so, Ed, what was it for you that made you want to become a PGA golf professional? Well, probably like many of us, I, I started out wanting to play golf for a living. Um, you know, even took my shot at it, you know, uh, played the Australian tour for a couple of years in the early 80s, uh, traveled with Brent Murray and J.D. Moulds, Kevin Smallback, and we had a great time. Um and as usual, Brent played great, and the rest of us just kind of hung around. But, um, you know, at some point you say, well, okay, um, maybe playing golf isn't exactly what I was meant to do. But at that point, I got a hold of the uh, – actually, I got a hold of Dale Johnson when he was in charge of the Oregon PGA. And he said, Jim Sheldon in Grants Pass is looking for an assistant pro. So I drove down from Portland where I grew up and uh, met Jim and made the move. And it was great. Absolutely been, you know, fantastic. He was a great guy to work for. He taught me a lot. And uh, it's just kind of, it's just kind of stepped uh, into uh, some things from there. I went from assistant pro to head pro. Um, found out that teaching was a passion. So I, um, uh, made a move, went over to Medford and started teaching. And I've been teaching ever since. That was about 2001. Yeah, that's fantastic. You know, everybody kind of at one point figures out their niche and they kind of stick to it. And it sounds like you've done the same. Yeah, yeah. Very fortunate. And then you get a little bit of success. And then, you know, more, more kids find their way um, to you or more adults, whatever, more golfers find their way. And, um, uh, obviously, doing a lot of uh, young people teaching has been uh, a standout part of, of what I've done. Yeah. So you bring up Jim. Um, why don't you share with us kind of who some of your mentors were, you know, as you've kind of come through your career? Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing because I've had, I've had some people that have been um, – obviously very strong personalities and very and quality people and professionals i mean the first pro when i was growing up was bunny mason that was at columbia edgewater and uh he's obviously a strong personality and uh and his assistant who gave me lessons to start out with was al mundell um and you know, then I, you know, just kind of was, you know, kind of went through, uh, you know, to where, to where I got to college and, and that kind of stuff. And then uh, Jim Sheldon was obviously a, a, a great, a great uh, mentor. And, and Jim introduced me to, well, one of them I'd already known, but two guys who really influenced my teaching. And that was uh, Jim Wilkinson and Walt Porterfield. Um, they, they were both just really on the cutting edge of, of teaching back in the early nineties. And, uh, I was able to do some, uh, education seminars with them. And I just learned so much from those guys and, uh, it had a big impact on how I went forward. Yeah, I bet. Well, I know you've, you've kind of helped us do some education seminars in Southern Oregon and we appreciate that as well. And, and hopefully you're able to pass on a little bit of what you learned and what you're currently doing to some of the new professionals that are out there coming up. Well, that's, that's kind of the idea, you know, and, and, and when they ask, um, I'm happy to do that, that kind of thing. So I know you used to be, uh, you used to play on that tour down in uh, Australia. As you said, you, you were kind of there with Brent Murray. 
But what is your lowest uh, competitive round that you've ever had? Oh, boy, that's a good question. I, I mean, I consider I, I wrote in my, my bio that 63 was my lowest round I ever had. And, and that felt competitive because I thought I was uh, playing to get a sponsor to, to uh, back me to go back to Australia. And, uh, well, uh, it was a good round and I felt great about it, but it just didn't work out, which was kind of <laughs> interesting. Um, I've had, I've had some 65s and 66s in, um, in fairly, uh, tense, uh, competitive situations, uh, before probably, uh, my best, my, 66 that meant the most was when I in the second round of the Pacific Northwest PGA senior section championship and uh, I won that tournament by two that was my first senior event and what made it kind of extra special is I beat a, a fellow named Don Bees by two shots oh wow so uh, excellent yeah he's a great player obviously yeah well played so when you have some spare time, what do you like to do when you're not teaching or, you know, playing golf? Well, I've got some good friends up north. Uh, I like to I like to get up there. I don't do it very often, but I like to get up north uh, into the Astoria area and do some duck hunting. Um, like I say, I grew up in Portland, so I know that area pretty well. Um, enjoy, you know, taking the family clam digging razor clam digging occasionally um and uh, you know i'm not a big gardener or anything like that but uh, uh but i do like watching sports on tv yeah what's your favorite sport to watch on tv oh man that's a great question i mean i, I mean i think it's got to be golf uh, yeah. but uh, i was a huge basketball fan when i was in portland because of the portland trailblazers so yeah. uh, i you know Things changed now. I'm now I'm kind of just following the the Beavers uh, sports fortunes, which haven't been all that good. But hopefully, baseball gets better here pretty quick. Yeah. So tell us your Beaver connection. Well, you know, I just uh, needed to make a decision when I was you know coming out of high school, and it you know I wasn't like a great student or anything like that, or wasn't that committed a student, um, but. A bunch of my buddies were going to Oregon State, so I said, okay, I'm going to go to Oregon State, plus the coach at Oregon State at that time offered me a little bit of help, a little bit of financial help to go there. That was Jim Ferguson, wow. and so that was uh, that was a good reason to go there. Yeah, good, I bet. Um, okay, so uh, what's your favorite major tournament to watch on TV, and tell us why? Well, the Masters is just because it just opens the whole year up, and it's just so great. It's just so really unlike anything else we watch in that. Um, uh, the tinch, I can't even imagine the pressure. Um, yeah, I teed it up in one major, uh, one major uh, national championship, the Australian Open, and on that first tee, I thought I was going to fall apart. I just thought I was just going to melt because of the pressure. Um, so it's hard to imagine what that's like. But the other one I like, I like the British Open because it's it really is so. It's just different. It's just a different deal, and I and I have a little bit of appreciation for, frankly, the way the uh, overseas fans cheer. It still sounds like they were cheering fifty years ago when when we watched them so okay so who would make up your favorite dream foursome that was a good question i mean i there were a lot of good questions but that one had me thinking and i mean i immediately went to oh gosh jack nicholas because jack nicholas was my favorite golfer growing up and 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 still still is um but then I started thinking about it and I thought, you know, I, I was you know, a little bit unfortunate to, to lose my father at an early age, but he, he loved golf, you know, every Sunday went out to the course and uh, my mother golfed and it was a family thing. Um, but um, 
you know, my father passed away before he could see the, kind of the, the golfer that I had become. And my mother just worked like crazy to do whatever she could to make sure I was busy, which is a pretty good move. Um, and golf was a big part of that. And then when you start having a little bit of a knack at that, you know, then you want to do it more. And so in thinking about it, it would be really great to play uh, 18 holes or nine holes with, uh, with them and be joined by my son, Reese who has, you know, become a wonderful golfer. He's in his last year of uh, college golf at Weber State. And uh, I just think that would be so great to watch my parents see that and spend, you know, a little bit of time with them. Yeah, that would be fantastic. Okay, and then one final question for you. So what advice would you give to a new professional or somebody who's, who wants to become a professional as they enter the business? Well, with anything, I just tell them, love what you do. You know, it, 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 you know, the, the, the golf business is tough business. You, there's a lot of hours, um, but you, you, if you can mix those hours into some things, you know, you've got to make, playing the game I, I that's one of the things i'd say is do everything you can to to keep your game in shape because you know if they take the ability to play out of what we do then just about anybody can sell a golf ball okay and if you can go out and, and show off to the everyday person that you can hit a a drive as far as you do and you can shoot a score the way you can and that means something to people. So I would, I would, that's one piece of advice. I would keep up your skill level. Um, I'd be ready to work plenty of hours and uh, recognize that winter is coming. And then, uh, um, and like, you know, Jim Sheldon, you know, just taught me so well. He's just, you know, and, and Al Mundell and all those guys, you know, just care about people. It'll work, you know. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, that's fantastic. I totally agree and, and appreciate you sharing that. You know, for anybody out there who's looking to make that move and, and get in, you know, that is certainly some good advice. Well, Ed, I appreciate you taking some time with us today. Uh, give everybody an opportunity to, to learn a little bit more about who you are and kind of what you do down in Southern Oregon. Well, great. And uh, if you need any uh, help with your technology up there, I'm the guy to call, okay? <laughs> you got it. <laughs>